It seemed like a long time later when Starflight finally slunk back into the main hall with Morosir close behind him. Clay couldn't tell whether Starflight was had told Morosir the truth. They didn't have any visions or read minds. He had just ordinary, like the rest of the Dragonettes. But who would be brave enough to tell Morosir that? The enormous Nightwing slid off to the Guardian's cave without a word to Sunny or Clay. Starflight glanced at them, then turned and headed for his sleeping cave. Clay hurried after him. What happened? He asked. What did he say to you? I'm not supposed to talk about it, Starflight said stiffly. He sat down in the middle of their cave, his wings askew behind him, and started poking through the scrolls on the floor. It's over here, Clay said, nudging a fat scroll with silver letters that had rolled underneath his sleeping ledge. Starflight hooked it over with one count, tucked it under a wing, and carried it up to his ledge. He curled up with his tail draped over his nose and started reading. Wow, so it was that bad? Clay said. Tales of the Night Wings was Starlight's favorite scroll, and he always read it when he was upset or fighting with one of the other dragonettes. The tip of Starflight's tail twitched. I have a lot to learn, he said. But you already know everything, Clay said. You have to be the smartest dragonette in all of Pyra. Couldn't you tell that by reading your mind? Starflight didn't answer. I thought he liked you, Clay said. Surely he said something about what a great and noble dragon you must be because you're a Nightwing. A long, tired breath whooshed out of Starflout's snout. Yeah, that's exactly what he told me, actually. Oh, said Clay. Well, that's good, isn't it? Did he say when you'll get your powers? Starflight fidgeted with the scroll, shredding a corner of it between his claws. Clay had never seen him upset enough to damage a scroll without noticing. He wished he could say something useful but he couldn't think of a single useful thing to say about Nightwings. At least you're not a Rainwing, he tried. Did Miles here say anything about glory? Starflight frowned at him over the edge of the rock. Not much, he said. Don't worry about the Rainwing, I'll take care of it. Clay felt a cold chill climb up through the stone floor and spread through his scales. What does that mean? What's he going to do? How should I know? Starflight poked his nose back into the scroll. Maybe she'll get to go home. She's probably the luckiest out of all of us. A pulse of fear pounding in Clay's head disagreed. He couldn't see the Guardians just releasing glory, not after all these years of secrecy. We have to go spy on them, he said, jumping to his feet. We have to know what they're planning. He stopped halfway out of the cave and stamped one foot in frustration. Oh, no, we can't. Marosia will know we're there. Right, Starflight said. He'll hear you thinking all your big, loud, worried thoughts. You don't know that my thoughts are loud and worried, Clay said. Maybe they're quiet and very serene. Starflight snorted in amusement, the first happy sound he'd made since Morrisier showed up. Even through his worry, Clay was pleased. What you doing? Sunny's anxious voice dropped back from the hall. What's that for? The heavy tread of dragon footsteps reached their ears, along with an ominous clanking. Stop! Wait! You don't have to do that! There was an enormous splash. Clay raced into the big cave with Starflight close behind him. He skidded to a halt, horrified. Kestrel and Dune was standing on the bank of the river, holding a length of iron chain between their talons. Behind them, Marlseer was holding Sunnyback with his tail as the tiny golden dragon tried to climb over him. Webs emerged from the river, dragging a writhing, hissing ball of blue scales. Kestrel and Dune threw the chain around Tsunami's neck and wrapped it around one of her legs. The three guardians hauled her over to one of the rock columns that stretched from the floor to the ceiling high above. Dune flung the chain around the column twice, binding Tsunami with barely three steps to move in in any direction. Kestrel took the two ends of the chain and blasted them with a bolt of flame. The metal melted into a bubbling mass welded together. Tsunami was trapped. Maybe some time away from the river will teach you to be grateful for what you have, Kestrel growled. It all happened so fast, Clay didn't have time to figure out what was happening, let alone stop it, before it was too late. He let out a yell of dismay and charged across the cavern. Let her go! He grabbed the chain and let go at once, hissing with pain at the searing heat. You'll regret this, Tsunami snarled. She clawed at the chain around her back leg but pulling on it tightened the loop around her neck. With a hiss, she stopped struggling. 
When we're free, when my family hears about this, when the rest of the world finds out how you treated the Dragonettes of Destiny, all your big dreams of your wonderful family, Kestrel mocked her. They don't care about you. When it's time to fulfill the prophecy, you'll be alive, and the Talons of Peace will have you, and that's all that matters. Why are you doing this? Sunny cried. Tsunami's the good one. She's wonderful. If anyone can save the world, it's her. Actually, Tiny Sandwing, Morosir mumbled, the dragon that you should believe in is Starflight over there. He nodded at Starflight, still rooted in place by the sleeping cave. Starflight ducked his head. Nightwings are natural leaders. You do what he says, and you'll be all right. Clay glanced over at Starflight and saw Glory standing in the archway of her own sleeping cave. Morosir narrowed her, his eyes at her. I'll be back tomorrow, he said to the Guardians, to make sure that everything has been dealt with. We understand, Kestrel said. Together, she and Doom rolled the boulder aside. Morosir squeezed through the gap and disappeared into the blackness without a backward glance. This is for your own good. Webb said, stopping in front of Tsunami. She raked her talons at him, and he stepped back. We only want to keep you safe. Maybe this isn't the perfect way, but... But dragonettes don't know what's best for them, Dune said as the boulder thudded back into place. You need us, whether you like it or not. You are all awful today, Kestrel said. No dinner for any of you. Go to bed, and I don't want to hear a squawk out of anyone until morning. Really? What else are you going to do to me? Tsunami challenged her. What if I feel like singing all night? She started howling in her off-key voice. Oh, the dragonettes are coming. They're coming to save the day. They're coming to fight for they know what's right. The dragonettes, hooray! Your fault, Dune snarled at webs. I told you not to teach that horrible bar song. Oh, the dragonettes are coming! Tsunami bellowed even louder. We have more chains, Kestrel yelled in her ear. We could throw one over your snout if you'd like me to force you to be quiet. Tsunami paused, glaring at her mutinously, then took another breath in and opened her mouth. Or we could chain up one of your friends, Kestrel offered. Perhaps Clay would like to spend the night hanging from a stalactite, so you have some company out here. Clay shifted uneasily on his feet wondering if there was anywhere he could hide out of Kestrel's reach before she could grab him. Tsunami snapped her jaws shut and lay down with her head turned away from all of the dragons. Her gills fluttered furiously, but she kept quiet. Much better, Kestrel said. She stomped off to her tunnel, her red scales flaring brightly in the fire's reflection. Webbs followed her with his wet tail leaving a darker trail behind them. Sunny pounced on Dune's tail before he could go on after them. Please don't leave her like this. I know you're not that mean. Dune shook her off. We're doing what we have to. He went after the others. As soon as they were gone, Clay tried tugging on Tsunami's chains again. They were hopelessly strong. Clay, stop, Tsunami whispered. You know what you have to do. Go, quickly. Clay shivered, dreading the cold water. But she was right. For the first time, spying on the Guardians was really important. He ran over to the river and dove in. Through the water, he could hear the muffled echo of Sunny's nervous squeak as he swam against the current to the rock wall. Without Tsunami's glow-in-the-dark scales to guide him, it took longer than usual to find the gap that led to the other cave. But finally, he felt open space under his claws, and he ducked and squeezed through. His heart was hammering in his chest as he popped through to the cave. Slowly, he paddled to the surface and poked his ears out into the air. This wasn't the loud confrontation they had heard the previous night. This time, the three big dragons were huddled around the fire, whispering. None of them glanced at the river as Clay floated closer. When tomorrow? Webbs asked. Kestrel leaned toward the fire, baking her scales an even brighter red. He'll be back midday. It has to be done by then. Her tail was coiled in a tight knot beside her. He doesn't want to see her again. Clay clenched his talons under the water. They had to be talking about Glory. Well, I'm not doing it, Webb said. Dune shot him a withering look. No one thought you would. Even though this is all your fault, 
said Kestrel. I still think we need five of them, Webb snapped. What's he going to do about that? He'll find us a sky wing, Kestrel said. Properly this time, no colorful substitutes. They were all quiet for a moment, staring into the fire. So how and when, Dune said in his no-nonsense military voice. Drowning would be simplest, he glared at Webb's. I joined the Talons of Peace to stop killing dragons, Webb said. I won't argue with Morrowseer, but I'm not doing it myself. It has to be me, Kestrel said in a choked, tense voice. She's just a rainwing, but she still might get away from you. She nodded at Dune's missing foot and the long scar that ran through his mangled wing. But can you go through with it? Webbs asked. Isn't it too much like... I mean, you all know what happened. That was totally different, Kestrel snapped. Glory is just a rain wing. I don't care about her. I don't even like her. She blasted a ball of flames at the fire so it blazed up. If you're sure, Webb started. I'll do it tonight while she's sleeping, Kestrel said. I can get in there and break her neck before the others know what I'm doing, especially with the bossy one safely chained up. So now he's the only one who could stop me. Shudders of horror were running through Clay so violently that he was afraid one of the big dragons would notice the waves on the water. He began paddling softly backward, but froze when he heard his name. Not Clay, Dune asked. He might try at least. He'll definitely try, Webb said. Dumb as a rock, but he's devoted to the other four. It's not natural that much loyalty in a dragon, Dune said, especially to dragons outside your own tribe. I can handle him, Kestrel said, even if he finally gets mad like we want him to. There's nothing he can do to stop me. Clay had heard enough. He sank down below the surface and swam toward the gap in the wall. What can we do? What can we do? What can I do? There's no time. How do I save her?